to another segment of Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers starring <laughs> your chain-breaking sister, <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, for those who are new to my channel, once again, thank you for stopping by. I hope you stay stick around if this is for you. Come on in, get home, get, get comfortable, welcome my fellow chain breaking sister uh, if you need to get caught up um, to understand where we're at right now feel free to check out my other segments where i go through my journey on the dr phil show uh, with my mother my narcissistic mother and uh, as we touch on all the points of my story and all the things that you can relate to in the name of promoting healing uh, self-awareness self-love awareness for others um, to speak up if you see something say something right uh, and all open mindedness and in open minds promote open mind which is very imperative very important that you do okay like I said in my last segment without an open mind uh, abusive beings like well, our mothers thrive right and we got to kill that right <laughs> If you would like to reach out to me, you just want to vent, whatnot, cry, shout, whatever it is, just want to say hello, just want to chat. My sisters, my inbox, my heart, my shoulders, and my ears are open to you. Uh, at any time, I will definitely drop my IG tag and my Facebook as well. For you ladies, do not do not hesitate, do not be afraid to reach out to me or just leave something in the comment section. Um, I will be doing a questions and answer segment here as well. And I would like to hear from you, my sisters. So please just drop me a line into your own IG. I'm, um, I'm going to also leave an email address here for you ladies here to... Um, reach out to me i thought about this today that maybe i should create one so if i uh, create this one in the middle of my editing i will be sure to drop my email and you can also use that as a uh, way to reach out to me as well but uh, i would love 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 to do a question and answer segment and so i'm looking to hear from all of you ladies and if i get enough on here then i would be more than happy to make that my next segment or whenever that is okay Okay, so um, once again, I want to say thank you, ladies, for all your love and your support, your constant support. Thank you for trusting me with your stories. Thank you for trusting me with your heart. Thank you for uh, trusting me enough to feel safe in this place because that is my full intention is to make you feel safe. Because like I said, uh, fortunately, but yet yeah, unfortunately, we are not alone. You are not alone, okay? Let's see. So our segment for tonight, ladies, is called What Would Jesus Do? WWJD. And you're like, Tiff, where are you getting at with this one? So in my mission to bring healing and awareness for not just myself, but for all um, and all of you lovely ladies, um, I like to reach out to each and every sister from each walk of life, from every walk of life. It is very important to me to do that because they like say you, um, I, being a preacher's kid, <laughs> a preacher's kid, get that aspect too as well. So I don't want to just speak out from the time, from the, from my other, my, the other walks of life without touching that one, because I feel like, um, being in within the life of a preacher's kid that even in watching these videos um 
maybe that they still would be a bit apprehensive about it due to what would Jesus think about me or um, how would he feel about me because we are groomed a certain way. They are groomed either, and preacher's kids are groomed as well, right? And, um, and parents can use that as a form of control like mine have. Uh, so I would like to speak on that tonight, if you will, for reach out to those. And also, like I said, it, this is for the preacher's kids, but also for those too who can relate to that or may hear it from a friend or someone and, and want to be able to relate to them on a level and say, that they, that's not an, you know, what would Jesus do moment. That's more of like, sounds like control. Sounds like narcissism, right? So how would we, they use that to control, you ask? So... I'm going to speak from my experience um, and what I endured as a preacher's kid. So, um, started with that favorite uh, line that many like to use and in our household was a lot. It's honor your mother and your father, right? Big one. It is like I have spoken on in uh, previous segments on this channel. It is a it is a phrase that is used that has kept me in bondage and chains for years. Okay, for years has always kept me in silence and in fear of my next move or even saying something. Um, I have been in church for as long as I can comprehend. Uh, what church was <laughs> since a kid since a little girl right and you are taught so many things but the one thing that you aren't taught while you're taught to honor your parents and as you should like i said in previous segment if they are worthy of honor but they never really speak on in the church and churches that i experienced and me being preacher's kid to a preacher um have never really heard the other side of things because I felt like in the church or at least in the environment that I was in that no one ever, everyone spoke on you should, on honoring your parents so that your days will be long and all of that good stuff that that's something you should wanna do, right? But no one spoke on the children like myself who have been abused by the same people that you, the same beings that you have been uh, ordered to, um, to honor. And it's always been a question over my head, but what do, what about the kids like me who have been given nothing to honor? You know, no one tells you what to do when they're not worthy of honor. What do you do with that? No one speaks of that in the church as much as they should, that it goes both ways because there actually is a part in the Bible right after that verse actually about honor that speaks on honor and thy mother and thy father that speaks on that you do not provoke a child to anger. I've never really heard much on that <laughs> verse at all. Honestly, I had to learn that on my own in my own reading um, over the years to realize that that is a thing that exists, that I've been do that <laughs> this is something that does exist. But it's not something that speaks, it's spoken on in our household because it is a form of control. And narcissistic beings like my mom and my enabling father, who's turned narcissistic himself, um, used this for years um, to control. So um, how did they do that? Um, they, they've done it so much that it has caused me to um, become more spiritual than religious. And I'll talk on that as well. So um, in my life in the church as a preacher's kid, um, it's everything. My father always taught me to be a good person, to to do the hard stuff. Because I'm doing it now, <laughs> it's working against me, right in their life, in their eyes, not against the world, but them, right. So uh, when it comes to them, to do the right thing, to be kind to others, to that sometimes doing the right thing uh, is the hardest thing sometimes, but we do it anyway. You know, integrity all of those good things um, and all of those morals and values that have been instilled to me, I have carried them on today at the age of 34, right? Ooh, ooh, 34. <laughs> Capricorn, <laughs> sidetrack. Right? Um, yes, they have been instilled in me um, since I was a child. So what does that look for? look like for a child who's now 
have the veil lifted, the curtains are open to who you're really dealing with. How does that make a child like myself, an adult child like myself, now that I'm aware of what I'm dealing with or what we're dealing with, what that looks like for us? Um, I can speak on many times where um, growing up, if you spoke back or you, if you spoke your mind, um, in a respectful manner, right? I never really felt like what I was doing was talking back. I always felt like, you know, I felt like something was wrong and I wanted to express myself, but it would be considered talking back, right? And it result in you getting a spanking or getting popped in the mouth, things of that sort. And it was always questioned on, oh, you know, what the Lord doesn't like and what what he would think about that, you know, and that always made me fearful to think like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't say anything and it shut me up, right? But now coming to grips with this now in my, in my adult years now has been really, really hard for me. Um, in my, I would say in my early 20s, um, when I was still trying to get a grip on things, on what was going on in my household, it did uh, deter me a bit from the church um, because it's nothing more uh, difficult as a preacher's kid in dealing with narcissistic parents than seeing your parents or coming to grips that your parents are walking contradictions. Now, granted, my mother has showed it many ways in, in my childhood, um, over the years, but my father was very different for me when I really didn't really didn't come to grips with that until <laughs> here recently with him and what I was dealing with with him. But um, in the church, my mother was in and out of church. But when she was there, she would I watched how she would manipulate use use religion as a weapon rather. Um, she if she had an issue with anyone in the church. Um, or uh, someone that she invited to a church. She would use song, <laughs> the church song or whatnot. Maybe we're singing in a choir one day. Me and my mother, this is really things that she's done. Um, singing in a choir and she's coming off the pulpit or off, the, off where she was at her platform to come down and to address this person. And to the congregation, it may seem like she is, um, excuse me, like she is, um, speaking the word and she, the spirit is moving but if you if you're the child of this person you understand that she is using this to attack this person and um it became to a point where my mother went to blows with someone in the church <laughs> it was a family member um so i've watched her do that when it comes to me as a daughter i've watched her use it against me in her testimonies one other way that they use to another form of control when um, using religion um I remember I had my sweet 16 birthday party and I am a twin for those who have forgotten on the show he's on there too as well we, and we were invited to come to a birthday party that this nice neighbor of ours from New Orleans happened to share uh her son happens to share the same birthday as ours so she thought that'd be nice to throw a uh, birthday party for us so um we went and I was rather shy, you know, <laughs> I was very shy. And you can tell now I'm the social butterfly now, but I was very shy. And I don't know if there was one of those reasons why I was, but um, I finally came out of my shell, let this party and I decided to dance with this boy that kept on asking me for a while, you know, do you want to dance or not? So anyway, my mother shows up and she doesn't grab my brother, but she grabs me and I'm, you know, I'm mortified, I'm embarrassed, and she calls me out. So she decides to bring this story up in church. So rather than just being a moment that she wants to talk to her daughter, I wasn't being crazy or anything, just dancing and whatnot. But, um, and um, she decided to share this as a testimony in church and disguise it as she's just a mother that's, you know, that's doing the world, the world, the, the war on, you know, anything that has to do with teenagers being teenagers, basically, and that, you know, devil can't have my kids and type of thing. And I'm going to tell you a story, but it's very humiliating, you know, to paint you out to be like this, this, that you were just this wild child at a party that decided, you decided just come in there and save the day and come grab your kids up and leave and saying, oh, not my child. When in reality, you're a welcome contradiction yourself, right? 
So um, that is a way that we are um, bullied into silence too as well, because what child wants to be used in the next testimony <laughs> for something that was over-exaggerated, you know, anything to keep control, to, to use that as um, control. Um, so my mother has done that a lot. You guys seen that at the church, you know, things of that sort when she, um, on Dr. Phil's show, when she ruined my wedding day. Um, but as for my father, um, my father, I always thought was like straight and narrow, like outside of my mom, he's a good person. And, um, you know, he got wrapped up with the wrong woman that's controlled him and he's just as guilty in my eyes, but, um, come to grips with him from a religious aspect was very hard for me. And it was very hard for me because he is the one that has instilled all these morals in me, right? Where my mother wasn't going to church. And when she wasn't in the word and she would fight with him uh, daily about going or not. And this is her life and whatnot. And he would still take all of us, his little ducklings to church. We would ride bicycles, whatnot. Whatever way we need to get there, we were getting there Sunday service. Or when I say Sunday through Saturday for a preacher's kid, there's the revival after the revival after the revival after the revival. And then there's Bible study. <laughs> so we were going, he's instilled all these morals into you. So um, watching him become the exact opposite of everything that he's instilled in you in me it was very heartbreaking and very and quite confusing for me um and one of the reasons why i deteared away from the church um because of that because i felt like my father left the like i i can't ex try and explain this to you like it was just crazy but um i recall a time where um plenty of times in my years now in my 30s where my father would um, always use the word as a reason to beat me down, to make me feel as if he, if I was inferior to him, right? So he would say things like, oh, you got your degrees and, and all of that and all, you, and all your smarts and stuff is not going to get you into heaven and it's not going to get you into heaven. And, you may, and every time when he wanted to bring up religion or talk about God, that always was the starting point, was about my education or about my success, which was an attempt to make me feel inferior to him as if I would never know enough or more than him, which made me feel really small uh, standing up next to my father, very small. So another way to control, to say you are, or and, and also projecting their own insecurities onto me as well, uh, maybe not feeling as inadequate or adding up, you know, in the, in their eyes when it comes to me sizing up their child who's come out and uh, driven to be successful, to be their best person as if what you instilled in us <laughs> and maybe they feel threatened. So um, the idea of having a child that is successful and driven and in school, got degrees and all of those things had maybe a bit, I felt like intimidated my father a bit where he felt the need to beat his chest about religion. And it made me feel very small because I always said, why would he continuously bring up my education or about my success and, and my ability to articulate? You know, all your big fancy words, you know, things of that sort. And it's like, well, I mean, didn't you tell me to go out and be my best self since I was a kid? Like to go out and, and, and take my education seriously, to be the best person that I can be. And now I'm kind of being ridiculed for that or I'm beaten down about that, you know, and it made me lose confidence in myself to be like, maybe I need to water myself down a bit. I've always been treated that way, but to use religion as a reason, excuse me guys, <laughs> notification, but to use that as a weapon to try to control your child, I thought was a bit sickening. So that became a pattern that I started to catch on to, like, why is it always about my success and stuff? We always start out about that when we talk about Jesus and, and all of that. And he's trying to get me to sit down and read the word and encourage me to read the word for myself. Um, but I found that when it was time to um, turn the tables, I would say, and to discuss that with him, this is especially after the Dr. Phil show, um, I have tons of questions. You know, being raised in the right way, uh, and 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 um, my morals, what morals wise with my father, I I have a lot of questions after that. Like when it came to his enabling behavior with my mother and him carrying me the way he did on the show and sacrificing me 
on on national TV for my mother. Um, she, so I asked them, I sat down with him one day and I said, I said, dad, can we have a conversation? So it wasn't anything smart, just like a real conversation. This is like adult, your adult child to you, father, you know? So he's like, yeah. And I started it out by saying, well, you know, dad, if you, you know, I want to start it out by saying this. If you knew you you were preaching, you know, out in the congregation and say you, which he would never, but if he did, you know, say you were doing all the things, you were stealing, you were cheating, you were lying, you were doing all these things right before Sunday service and someone in the congregation saw you doing these things, right? Okay, I'm following you. And say that I sat in this congregation and you, your, your topic and your service happens to be on everything that you did but it's like anti like no i'm not for it you know you shouldn't steal you shouldn't lie you shouldn't do all the things basically that i just did right would you sit there and listen to you and he said no you know i wouldn't sit there and listen and i said okay good good because that's not exactly the foundation that i wanted to set for this conversation you wouldn't so i went on to tell him that's how i feel you know that's exactly how i feel i feel like that with you after watching you on the show and just in general, throughout coming to grips with you and and what you what role you play in this dynamic when it comes to my mother, I had a serious question I want to ask you. Where was God at in your heart and in that presence? Where was he at with you when it comes to you when you went on national TV and called your daughter a whore or um, co-signed to your daughter being a prostitute? <laughs> or being a liar or being a demonic mentally ill individual did god tell you to say that you know and in, in, in the midst of me saying that he's like oh oh he said yo you can stop it right there you can stop it right there you know the the all oh, you get trying to shut me up but once again this is where they use religion to try to control so he says that god gave him spiritual discernment to know what, what i was going to say before i even say it so it's his way of saying, I'm not trying to hear that, you know, but trying to say, God told me what you were going to say. So it's no need to say that. But in reality, it's just a way to try to shut me up. And I'm saying, okay, I respect the fact that maybe the Lord had gave you spiritual discernment in this moment, but can I still finish what I was saying? <laughs> and that's my way of taking my power back. Like, no, we're not going to do this. Like, I am catch, I'm on to you. Like, I'm, I'm figuring you out. Like, this is not a Jesus moment here. This is your way of trying to shut up your child because now I am old enough to use everything that you have instilled to me to against you, right? <laughs> Which was positive things. And now I have to question. And now this is my moment to question and acknowledge the things that were instilled in me and ask why is it, you know, I, why are you not mirroring that? You know, why did you teach me these things and you do the exact opposite? And he completely in that moment used Jesus as a way to say, I'm not trying to hear this. Um, you know what, Tiffany, I'm not here to give you all the answers or give you closure that you seek. Okay. Yes. I do think that you're demonic and basically God's going to make you pay for everything that you, every lie you've told on your mother, everything that you're doing now. God does not like ugly. God does not like defiant children. <laughs> Even in taught years to not like you. So, um, I thought, you know, basically told that my life is the way it is, which I'm still trying to figure that out, <laughs> is the way it is. And then I basically things they say to make you question, like, what, what's wrong with me? Um, you know, I'm successful. I have a great life, you know, outside of you guys, you know, driving me nuts, but, you know, and making me feel like crap. But, you know, to say that basically that's why your life is the way it is because of the things that you do. You lie on your mom. God, you cannot prosper and God is not going to allow you to be blessed. And I asked him, do you think you're being blessed? Yes, without a doubt, the Lord is blessing me. God is blessing me on. And I just basically said, if, if the Lord, if this is the way the Lord blesses people, I want no partake in that. And in that conversation after that, he said, I still think you're lying. After all of that, I still think you're lying. Still think you got issues. You got some mental health issues, and you need uh, you need Jesus. <laughs> it's not just you not just need a psychiatrist or whoever. You need Jesus, uh, okay? And he gets up and he walks out. So he uses the Lord as a way to um, to shut me up and completely shut me down, because in his eyes, you're, I'm not spiritually up to his level. 
and he's told me that you're basically here all the way beyond the floorboard and I'm here in Jesus world like I know more than you I know the back the Bible's back and forth blah 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 you know nothing like you said I'm the Matilda aspect you're big I'm big you're a little I'm right you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it you're still at this age right so um imagine being brought up in this world as a preacher's kid and everything you know basically just backfiring on you and you're being that person but you see that the person that's instilled that into you is not that person at all right or has changed so um that has uh, made me sway away from the church if I had to be honest with you like um it's like why even try you know so when I say why even try like it made me lack my trust in the church so I made church wherever I was at. So I decided, when I say that, I decided to live my life more from a spiritual aspect than religious because of them. Um, so that means that I have, I still take, I, I've i taken the moral aspect of things from religion, from that, from Christianity and all that. And I still have those things that I still, and I live my life. I live my life. I got tired of feeling like I was an abomination because I wore a top like this or um, my, like my mother would say, you know, that's not the way you should carry yourself or, well, you know, modeling and stuff. And I decided to live my life. So that's going into um, what happened. You know, how do I choose to live my life now? I still live my life to be a good person because um, I think that's the most important thing. I think that you can read the Bible and quote all the scriptures and win the world's uh, greatest Jesus <laughs> representative or just the greatest disciple of 2022. And you could still have the most evil heart. Right. And I think this is what's more what's what's most important to me is that I live for Christ, that I can actually live in my truth. And I told my father this as well. I can live in my truth to say that I am an amazing individual. I'll slip up and say a curse word here or there, you know, in the midst of anger or whatnot. It just being a human being, you know, um, I like to have a drink or two every now and then. I like to dance until there's no tomorrow until my shoes melt when I drink or, you know, sometimes I want to be able to let loose and have a little fun and not worried about being criticized for it or being or feeling like I'm going to hell for doing that. This is the things that's used to control me. And so, um, especially in marriage as well. I mean, that's exactly why I was, like we, I talked about in my last segment, in toxic marriages and things of that sort, you know. All of these things have been distorted for me. So I, it has made me just take my own, make it my own, if you will. Meaning not, not turning or twisting it, but taking all the good things from it where I'm more spiritual than I am religious. I give back to others well, like I'm doing now. I'm kind, I'm courteous. I, I, I live a good life. I live a, the kind of life that if I were to die today, I would die with a smile, right? Knowing that I have been the best person that I can be. Not perfect, but a good person. And I think that's what counts at the end of the day for those who wanna know how I should live my life. So this is just kind of me tapping into that part to say to my preacher's kid, I get it, God, I get it. And I'm not here to bash God or to tell you that there's not a higher power because there is, you know, in my heart there is, but I'm just saying that I just choose to take from that. I, I, I go, I celebrate Halloween. <laughs> was <laughs> celebrating Halloween I put I still like Halloween all of those things I make it my own and I say and I say and I say to myself Tiffany is this the kind of life are you the kind of person that if you were to die today you would be happy and that people would have good things to say about at your funeral yes yes you're not perfect but you're great you're no you're an awesome person and that's all that matters, guys. That is all that matters. So if it sounds like if you can relate to the story, I had a young lady on here on my comment section who said that they could relate to that. So I wanted she was I wanted to let you know, Boo, that you are the reason why I decided to speak on this. Like, why did I not think about that before? That we don't speak about that enough. That 
about how parents use religion as a weapon to control their children. So I decided to talk about that from an aspect of dealing with narcissistic parents. Um, so I wanted to reach out to the PKs today, the preacher kids today, let you know that it is okay. It is okay to speak up for yourself. No, you are not an abomination for speaking up. No, it is not defiance. It is standing up for yourself and living in your truth. And if you struggle with that and you want to talk about that some more, like I said, my inbox is open, my heart, my ears, and my shoulder are always here. You're not alone. You are not an abomination. You are not going to hell for <laughs> speaking up for yourself. And if it sounds similar, baby, there's a difference between honoring and being controlled. Okay, when you make sure that before you decide to make another decision um, that is in regards to your parents and what you do and what you don't do and what you say and what you don't say, think to yourself, are they worthy of honor in this moment? In this moment, thinking of all the things they've done and in this moment, are my parents worthy of that honor? It doesn't mean that you have to be rude or you have to be nasty, but you take your power back and you say, no, I'm not okay with this. I know, I know what you say there, but you're not, you know, you're a contradiction. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. This is your truth. And there's no amount of Bible that um, someone should be able to beat you down with to make you feel like you have to be quiet. Okay? So this one here is for you guys. If you want to talk more about that, if you want to, to if there's certain things I haven't touched on, when it comes to that, feel free to reach out to me, my loves. Um, I thought that I would speak on this a little bit tonight. Um, until next time, my guys, you guys have my IG. If you want to talk further more, you want to vent, you want to, I will post this up here once again. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave my email here as well. Um, I do want to do, excuse me, a question and answer segment. I do plan on getting some of my girlfriends on here. If you want to be one of the, if you want to be someone that I can um, bring on to my channel as well to speak on your experiences or just give words of encouragement to your fellow sisters or say some things in your heart, this is your platform as well. Let me know. We can coordinate a time and place to do that. That's perfectly, that's so, I'll be so cool with that. Hey, thank you guys once again. It's been a pleasure. I love you so much. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go love on my man and my dogs and get myself ready for work tomorrow. Um, I just wanted to get this week started off on a good foot by giving out some more love and some more encouragement. Um, be on the lookout, guys. So my next segment might be I am getting into um, dabbling in back into my writing for a, a spoken word. Said spoken word poetry. I have a big, big, big moment coming up next week, and I will be sharing it to you guys. And I thought to use my very first piece for us, so I will be sharing that with you. So wish me well um, on that as well. I will be sharing with you soon. Thank you, my loves. You've been great. Until next time, you stay beautiful, you stay strong, and you stay, you stay in the fight. Once again, guys, I got my red on. Like I said, you guys know, for you guys that don't know, this is another way of me taking my power back when my mother used to tell me I look like a clown <laughs> with my lipstick on because she was envious of that. Little things that they use to tear you down. So we take our power back each day by doing that. So every every time you see me with my red lipstick on or I'll put my red lip, all lipstick on in my segment, then know that that is my way of taking back my power and encouraging you to do the same. You guys have been lovely, my sisters. I love you so much. Like I said, until next time, stay strong. You stay beautiful. You, st you stay in the fight, sis. I love you all. Bye-bye.